Welcome to another victory post game of Banditland Boulevard. Trevor Hauer here with you. Alongside with me is Tony Lamaca, aka Boxhead 98TL, recapping the Bandits 7 to 6 overtime win over the San Diego Seals. That's right. The Bandits are 3 and 0 in extra time this year. Going on to 11 and 3 on the season, still at number 1 in the Eastern Conference thanks to the Las Vegas uh Desert Dogs, by the way, um, mm -hmm. for a little extra insurance there over the Rochester Nighthawks. But overall, low scoring. And if I had to say anything myself, this was the ultimate Matt Vince game. He played the absolute game of his life. Yeah, unbelievable goaltending by both Matt Vince and their goaltender, Frank uh, Scigliano. Both goaltenders were giving it all. They both knew what they had to be done. But once again, so, God, 40-plus years old goaltender still has game. And, boy, does he keep those uh, the bandits alive inside that game. And uh, I, I don't know. I'm in utter shock how well he played. So good locking it down. The least amount of goals against this entire season, and he did it at the right time where it was a much-needed win out west. Absolute menace. I mean, he was playing on his head the whole time. He still leads the league in saves. And this game was had some good, had some bad, and it had some ugly. Mm -hmm. We can get right into the good stuff. Obviously, our clutchness in overtime is what is keeping us in first place. I mean, if we lost maybe one or two of those, we're looking at a completely different Eastern Division standings. Mm -hmm. our, our performance in the clutch has been there all season long, and you can't even deny that. When it goes to overtime, you always have that feeling in the back of your mind. You know, this could go either way, but the Bandits are 3-0 and in extra time, obviously beating the Philadelphia Wings and then beating the Halifax Thunderbirds and now being the San Diego Seals. Their performance in the clutch is absolutely phenomenal this year. Yeah, so far we can't complain about it. 3-0, and like you said, uh, and the go-to hero is obviously our captain, old captain, Steve Prior. Who would have thought, man? <laughs> but that is an example. Let's just say, let's let's recap on that game-winning goal. Let's take an example of what to do when you need to just take the open lane and take your shot when it's there. Steve Priolo proved it when Nick Weiss was alongside him, giving him the extra little boost, uh, the, give the, the lane to go to it. He didn't hesitate. He didn't overthink. He strictly went to the net, took the shot low, and it beat him by the left foot side, or to, or that's to the goaltender, but to our side, the yep. right foot. And literally won the game for us and right there and then I've been, I've been begging people when you have an open lane look what happens when you go for it and that's what happens you get the game winning goal and you get recognized and be the hero of the night imagine that solo with that imagine Unreal. that i mean that he took just... he took his nickname coast to coast to a whole different meaning he ran sure. down the floor <laughs> Sure. All the way up the floor to shoot it sure and, and score that game-winning goal. That's why he is called Steve Coast to Coast Priolo. The captain striking goal is a great way to end the game. There was some mm -hmm. bad, though. Uh, one goal in the first half. Tony, I have to just ask the obvious question. Because <sighs> I know that we are 11-3, and, and you know, that's the, that's the number one shadow. I mean, it's not really a shadow over what's going on. It's kind of... It is kind of an overshadow over what's been going on with this offense lately. Three or, three or four weeks of scoring 10 goals or less. I mean, what is going on with this offense? I don't really know to tell you. I mean, it's depending on how they play. Uh, let's see. Chase didn't play. He got hurt that in warm-ups. I he think that was what, that was what Lof, yeah, Loffler, Scott Loeffler said that he got injured during warm-ups. So he's got the so, inside scoop more than anybody else. So so we don't know when he's going to be back. So uh, Hopefully next week. Wise, hopefully by next we got week a very Toronto. important game next week. Yes. Actually, not that next week, but this Saturday coming up. is Saturday. In uh, five so, days away. That's yep. right. So other than that, let's, let's recap. Um, the fact of how being stopped – having 10 or less goals. I mean, that's, that's what every team's looking to go for against us is that they're going to pick the seals playbook and they're going to look at what they can do to slow down our offense and shut down the way, mentality of what we've been doing has been scoring above 10 goals per game. Uh, our defense has been pretty solid and I don't think that hasn't changed, but got better this past game. Um, 
but all in all, uh, they're finding a way to like slow down the, our scorers. Look at Dane. He finally got his first goal in three games. That's so good right. for any team to do. If you shut him down, then who's our go-to next guy? It's Josh Byrne. Right. Obviously, he did have three goals. He got a Hattie. He, he had a, got a Hattie. Um, and then there's other guys that stepped up. I mean, there was Brent McCauley with one. Yep. Chris Cluche got one. Um, Steve Priolo. Steve Priolo got the game winner. Oh, Jesus, I'm like looking through and I got to see through these stats. Um, yeah, like I said, McCauley, Smith, Byrne got three. That's five right there. Then Priolo. Cluche. Who's got the Cluche. Other one? Cluche. And then Cluche. So, guys, it comes down to where – they're asking for help. They're like the, our starters are asking for the second line to step up like Macaulay to Hoka uh, chase when he gets there. Um, Solver, all those guys that can score goals like Nathaniel. Again, he was a healthy scratch. I don't know why. For some but, reason. I mean, yeah. No idea. Some reason he was a healthy scratch, but again, they're like asking him, what is it? What is it time? What is it? Are your time to say, I could do this too, as much as the big guys can do it. So all in all, I think this is a well-developed team effort win. Not the kind of aspect uh, that we wanted to see. We wanted to see more than 10 goals. We obviously had the defense right in the, in the playbook. But again, it just, for some reason, it's starting to falter a little bit because of the yes. fact that what, you know, with the way things are turning out, I could be because they're tired and it's getting towards the end of the season. Not the kind of moment, not the kind of mentality you want to go into playoffs, but maybe, excuse me, maybe they're slowing down. I don't know. It's but just you also got to think of it. Yeah, think of it this way too. They've been battling injuries ever since Josh Byrne went down, and pretty mm-hmm. much the entire season. And everybody was thinking like nobody or there's no way the bandits can possibly keep this up. And there's always there's always a crazy rotation of new players getting added, to, new offensive forwards getting added to that mm-hmm. injury reserve. This time we got Frazier who got hurt in warmups and Tehoka is mm-hmm. now out and then obviously Dylan Robinson is out and who yep. can be an offensive defenseman type of player. And sure. I mean, they're overall, it's like something's got to give. Like, there's no way that these be- that these depth guys can carry this momentum throughout the whole rest of the season. So there might be a little bit of fatigue there. That's what I'm thinking. But the thing I'm personally concerned about going, you know, close to the playoffs is the last four weeks, this offense just – they we're getting – we're starting to get more of our starters back, and our offense right. has definitely regressed a whole ton. I mean, we can't mm. hit the net. That second quarter was disgusting. Uh, it was the, amount of, the amount of missed shots from mm-hmm. open lanes and power play opportunities that were going nowhere. I mean, this offense is offenses win you games because obviously you got to score more goals than the other team, right? So right. if we're going to have this type of offense going into the playoffs, we're going to have some problems. But um, might be a one and it, done, and we don't uh, want that. No, I'm not sure if it's fatigue or what it is, but all the pressure is on our shoulders because. We're the number one team in the East. We just got to find that offensive groove again. And it seemed like the Rochester game, like where we scored 13 with half our freaking roster out of the lineup. We had a better Mm -hmm. offense, more consistent offense. Same with that Philly game. Same with the Georgia game, winning that game 18 to nine. I'm winning the Georgia game 11 to nine at home when we had a, when we're missing a couple starters, but I mean, Colorado, Mm -hmm. you score eight San Diego, given, you know, they have a great goalie, a great defense, great offense, but we held them down to six, which was great. Um, Unbelievable. We scored only seven. And then I think before that we scored 10, both games against Halifax. I mean, Mm. we're, we're not really generating the flashy numbers and we're not blowing teams out, but we're winning games. And Ian McKay put it out on his Instagram today. An ugly win still counts as a win. My only only concern is, this offense uh, sort of going downhill at the wrong time as we're approaching playoffs. Yeah. I mean, especially with this Saturday's game coming up against Toronto, what are you going to do if you guys can't do it without your uh, go-to guys? And if your go-to guys can't produce, who's going to be the next ones to step up? Maybe this might be a call for Johnny T to say, Hmm, I'm going to have to play my secondary crew to see what they can do in a time like this. But, Again, that's his call. We can't control it. All we can do is support and uh, cheer on our boys to do what they can do best. And again, this was an all-out defensive goaltending show of an event. And believe me, both defenses, proud of you guys, San Diego, for really shutting us down. And, and their 21-year-old goaltender, man. Their 21-year-old yeah. goalie hanging with the best team in the in the East. 
like well, that. Unfortunately, Origi uh, Ari was his name. He didn't play against us. He played against the. Uh, oh, he was uh, against Panther, Panther City. City. That's right. So yep. yeah, so uh, Skigliano was the one that played Sk- against other- us, and he still played good, as good as he did. The other, the so, other Italian guy. Yep. Yeah. So yep. I mean, kudos to them guys. I mean, all in all, best goaltending game I've ever watched but in a lacrosse game and that is that night that we beat them seven six and both goaltenders keeping it under 10 no you doubt. can't ask for a better a better defensive and goaltending type of night those are like your your uh not like your high school but maybe like your close college games or something like that yeah. that would be like who's going to be the one to win who's going to be the victor but thankfully it was on our side the orange and black came out victorious and we still remain on top of the east that's right and how much of a defensive swing is it when you have a guy like Adam Bomberry back in the lineup? Mm-hmm. Oh, I mean, you hold the time. That's huge. You hold the best team in the West to six goals just because you have that guy there. Like sure. You see Dylan Robinson go on the IR, which is not really surprising. We've seen a, everybody yep. at least get shuffled in the IR at least once this season. So it's really not mm-hmm. surprising to see another player on there, but you see this game and you have no chase Frazier, no Kazevnikov, no Robinson's no, no Robinson. I mean, Dylan both of, Brandon, none. all three, all three of them are out because you got to think about yeah. Justin too, who's probably coming yeah. back or thinking about coming back towards playoffs. But we'll see about that. But mm-hmm. Adam Bomberry just coming back, I was like, oh, you know what? All right, like Dylan Robinson's out, but we do have an upgrade coming back, and that's Adam Bomberry, and he really stepped Bomberry's up. Bomberry's a beast. That defense, I'm sorry, he's up. a beast. He's, he's a monster. Just so- and we he's- only gave up Thomas Vason to grab that guy. <laughs> Steve Dietrich, you mastermind. Steve Dietrich, you menace getting a steal like that. That is huge. I mean, Bomberry is like their go-to tough kind of grit guy like we had with Jordan Storos. Um, he is the guy that shuts down the main starter. Like, look at Dane Doby. He was struggling against – Dane Doby couldn't go past Bomberry. Then it was Dixon. Still having a hard time against Bomberry. Yep. Like they were trying to beat up the injured Bomberry, and Bomberry says, "I'm fine, guys. So He's if you good. want to attack my side, go right ahead. I'm going to just shut you down." And that's what he did. He played shutdown defense, and that's how good the group of the defenders played. Uh, Martin had a good night. Uh, we had so many block shots; it was like six in total, I believe. And there, and again, is the reason why our defense has gotten super strong is because. Leadership from Priolo, obviously getting the game-winning yep. goal. Bomberry coming back in the lineup and actually stunning their high-powered offense to only six. And Matt Vince being himself, looking like he's 20 years young again and just dominating the field and just shutting down their offenses. I was in awe of watching both goaltenders, not just Vince, but both goaltenders doing an excellent job for both teams. And guess how we won it? We won it in come-from-behind fashion again. They blew a 5-2 again. lead. And we won 7-6 in overtime. I mean, that's just the way the Bandits have been playing all season long. It's kind of fun to watch a team like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, one goal in the first half, that, that's that got to change. But my that question is... That definitely scared is, me. Oh, me too, for sure. But at the same time, they only had three in that first half. So you can talk mm-hmm. about lackluster anemic offenses on both sides there. Um, 3-1 yeah. is just a low-scoring game at that point. But uh, where are the Matt Vince haters now? Where are the Matt? They're nowhere to be found. They're they're very very quiet on the internet right now. Yes, they are. I can't believe you guys. Oh yeah, let's. Uh, he's gonna be. Excuse me. He's gonna be on his last year anyway. So <laughs> yeah, but we'll guys. Forty years old and still got it. And you guys say he sucks or he's terrible in that? You're on your we mind. Should, we should have started Shanahan against the Mammoth. Like, give, give me a break. Like, get seriously. That is just so ludicrous. I mean, he it's gave nuts. up a few goals that he should have stopped in that fourth quarter, but that offense in that game gave us nothing. Mm-hmm. He played on his head this game while the offense was he giving sure them did. nothing in the first half, or the first three quarters for that matter, because they really turned it on towards the end of the third going into the fourth. And, yeah. I mean, it was just – he was playing – if he was not starting, we lose that game 15-6. I'm sorry yeah. to tell you guys that, but if he was not starting, we, we lose that game 15-6 because Curtis Dixon, you know – Adam Bombay can only be out there t- for so much, for so many minutes. And mm-hmm. Justin Martin can only be out there for so many minutes. Steve Priolo, Ian McKay can only play D for so many minutes, but they will eventually Unreal. find the back of the net. And Dobie did Dixon did. Cause we knew they were, we knew they were going to, um, of course, 
But Matt Vince played the game of his life. I mean, you can go back to the days where he played in New York, when he played in Rochester. I think this will go down as one of his best performances in an NLL game, and it came in his 40s. His 40s, he had a game like yeah. that. Unreal. You can't ask for a better – any kind of better game out of the man, especially with that, unless he goes for the full on throttle Dominic Hasek shutout, which is hard just to waiting do for that day. Just waiting for that day. Unreal if that ever happens again. Um, but again, look what the bandits did, especially throughout the entire game. Shut down defense in three of the five quarters, technically speaking, if you want to count overtime as another quarter. What does that tell you? That is so, that is sick on a goaltender and defensive way of just saying this is what we're going to do against one of their against the best in the West. They didn't obviously play like the best in the West, except for defensively and goaltending. Offense was off because they had the game the night before, and maybe they were lagging scoring. That definitely or helped maybe, us. That definitely maybe, helped us. Yep. Maybe they didn't face a defense like us. Maybe not. And look what happened. I mean, they look at scores more than six. Look at where they were. Panther City was feeling themselves. They were very, very cocky about the situation, saying, mm-hmm. "Oh my God, look at us! We're winning all these games. We can't be touched." They got humbled by San Diego. They won that game seventeen to nine against them. And oh, then yeah. San Diego, for all we know, could have came into their house and said, "You know what? We're on this high right now. We're going to roll over this team in the Bandits, and we're going to we're going to take two games in two days." They thought they were going to get that win when they're up five two. Uh, mm-hmm. But this team does not say die. This team no, is not, unless unless they're playing the Colorado Mammoth. But you know that was last week. But uh, <clears throat> this team does not say die against any team in the West not named Colorado. And mm. San Diego, the Bandits are three and zero against those guys in franchise history. They have never lost a game to the San Diego Seals. Yeah, especially with now with the high powered offense that they have with with basically half of them being former Calgary Roughneck players that beat us up in 2019. But yep. now. It just seemed like, hmm. We, we kind of found our way against those guys now. We sort of figured yeah, them out. We did. And the thing is, is that it all comes in a good matter of time. Patience is a virtue, and that's what they did. They obviously didn't falter at the, uh, you know, at the excitement or at the possibility of losing into the biggest period possible in the overtime period. But again, here's something that they got to look at. They're – they're more not of that fast pace going offense like they were in the last years. They're more conservative. They like to wait, <laughs> excuse me, until the very opportune moment. And they are a well-conditioned team this and they're year. They're playing with a lot of adversity too. Look at that injury report every week, man. I mean, every week. And it's that. unbelievable how yep. well they have come out of with the second team coming in. Uh, Brad McCauley getting his chances. Nathan Kosnikov getting his chances. Dalton Silver getting his chances. And, uh, other players like look at Ian McKay when he had to step up. Dylan well. Robinson, we can't forget about Carter four. McKenzie, players like yep. that. Yep. So again, we can't be mad uh, about the fact that our depth is strong, but we have to like look forward to in the next few games, which is going to be the crucial four, uh, final four, I believe it is. Yes. Well, we have plenty of time to turn that offense around going into the playoffs. I mean, we have a whole month plus change of lacrosse left before playoffs start. We already clinched our spot. Now it's time to clinch that first overall seed in the East. Mm-hmm. Uh, it took you guys four weeks for that offense to kind of, you know, climb down from that high. It's time to, it's, mm-hmm. We got four more weeks to shoot it right back up going into the playoffs because the team that gets the most momentum going into the playoffs is the, probably the team that's going to be the most successful in the playoffs. So Absolutely. Even if it's like 12, 13 goals a night, take the gradual approach. Try to target 12, 13, 14. Would it be great to score 16 every night like we're used to the Bandits seeing a lot? Of course of it course. would. But, you know, looking at that injury report, you can't blame them and you can't blame Johnny T., but uh, you have the goaltender to keep you in games. You have the transition game to get you goals. And you have that high-powered offense to get you goals, too. And then it can only get better if co- in the last couple weeks of the season if Brandon Robinson comes back. He's that big body in front of the net that's going to pick up the mm-hmm. loose change and shove it in the net. Chris Cloutier has been amazing since his return, and I hope that yep. doesn't change. And if Chase Frazier can stay healthy, if you can stay healthy going into the playoffs, that will be an absolute game changer because the game where he did return – he had a he had two goals, he had a couple assists, and he looked like a he looked like a complete player. So if he can stay healthy, if we can, just stop getting injured. I know it's kind of hard to say, but like I I really enjoyed the way that we're winning games and I really like it's amazing and it's kind of scary to the rest of the league how we're winning all these games. But mm-hmm. just uh, I want them cuz like we keep saying like just wait till this team gets healthy. Well, we're approaching the final 4 weeks of the season. 
it's time to start getting healthy right now going into the playoffs because, you know, you want to go win a championship. You got to be the most complete team possible. We saw that in 2019, 16, and 2022. The more complete team won the title that year. That was Saskatchewan, Calgary, and Colorado. So Mm -hmm. it's you got to be complete. But obviously you don't want to rush players that aren't ready back in there. But Absolutely. if Kazevnikov is completely healthy, JT, put him in the game, man. Yeah, I got to play him. Got to play him. That's the only way you're going to have these other guys come back and be 100% for you whenever you're ready. But again, don't rush these guys back that are still coming off of injury. I mean, yeah, I know that their mentality is like, ah, put me in, coach. I'll be fine, really. And then a play later, then all of a sudden, oh, there's a re-injury again. They and retweak go something. Off. Yep. Can't be taking chances like that. But let's start thinking about the other positives of this game. Uh, face-offs, Max Adler, obviously doing very well, winning 12-17. Fantastic job. Um, staying out of the box, it's uh, basically four penalties each team. We got okay. a couple We got a couple legal substitutions that we could clean up, but other That's than that. clean up. Oh, my God, that was ugh. terrible. I mean, that the was, first one was, was, what, 45 seconds into the game? Something like that. Something yeah, like that? I was like, what? Like, whatever happened with that? Oh, I have to kind of like say thank you, referees, because that one goal that Dixon dove into the crease. That I think was that was a goal. goal. That was I'm good sorry goal. to say it, but I was like, Ugh. And I'm like, where's, Tony, the, where's the play? We are going to call that a makeup call for all the years that they've screwed us. So I'm not uh, even going to say thank you to them. One. They can't be just one, but still. I'm not even going to say thank you to them because they they owe us and they owed us big time. I'll take that. Mm. I'll hey, take that. We'll, take, we'll take the no goal if it's, God forbid, if that's what they called it. So, okay. Yep. So, anyways, um, Adler doing well in faceoffs. Vince, obviously, being the best of himself that night. Start Defense, one, man. proud yep. of you boys. Good job there. And offense, yeah, got to pick it up a little bit. But thank Absolutely. you for the, getting enough goals for when you need to. And, of, of course, for number 23, Steve Priolo getting his third goal this year. Unsung hero, um, man. Unsung hero, I think, player of the game. Got to yeah, be him. Other than Matt Vince, absolutely. Got to be Steve Priolo. Let me see. If I, if I had to give out the three stars of the game, it would be star number three, uh, Steve Priolo. Star number two, Josh Burns. Star number one, Matt Vino Matt Vince. Vince. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah, that's def- – That's I can even agree more. That's exactly what I would have gone with. Uh, but, I mean, you got to give San Diego credit, too, because, I mean, they their defensive game was strong. And I really wasn't expecting mm-hmm. – I was expecting their offense to be absolutely electric and having their defense be, like, a little bit more of their lackluster side, but I was completely wrong. And I thought the yeah. Bandits' offense would be like, you know what? Whatever happened last week against the Mammoth, we're going to we're gonna write that wrong and score 13, 14 goals on these guys. They played great on defense. And that goaltender that they have – both of them, Frankie. clearly. Yep. My God, they're they're those guys are amazing. They're going to be a force to be reckoned with in that Western playoff Western playoff race. Yep, between them and Calgary right now, tied for the top of the West. So you we'll never know. Panther City there. can make some noise, and Colorado can make some noise. You never know um, mm-hmm. what's going on with that. But Colorado, what happened last week, guys? You guys were pumping your chest after beating the Bandits. What happened to the Mammoth, Tony? What happened to those guys? Vancouver beat them. The Vancouver Warriors beat them, and they didn't just beat them. They smoked them. Well, let's not say smoked. They, they only won by two goals. Vancouver oh, well, they, beat well, them 14-12. They were smoking them. They were up 13-7 in the game, and then they, oh, they kind of wow. let them come back. But, yeah. Yeah, but, I, ca- um, I kind of shut it off when it was 13-7 because I was like, oh, my God, these guys are going to lose to the worst team in the West. Yeah, big props to the Vegas Desert Dogs, though, for beating the Rochester Nighthawks. That was a plus for us. Thank yeah, you Connor, so much. Yeah, Connor, I bet you wish you were playing for that team right now. <laughs> yeah, that was absolutely ugly on their part. Unreal. But I'll thank them later. <laughs> yep. Now, I wish Albany were to be clutch, but, I mean, dude, we're struggling on offense. Toronto's struggling a lot on defense lately. Maybe this mm. game upcoming, we'll get into this on the preview coming up earlier sure. or, or later on this week. But yes. maybe this is the game where the offense decides to spark it up. Like, they, we see that Toronto's defense has been struggling and struggling hard the past three or four weeks. Our offense has mm-hmm. been struggling hard for the last three or four weeks. If you if you see where I'm going with this and where this logic is heading, I mm. think this is the game where the Bandits can pop off for 13, 14, 15 goals, get that spark in that offense back. Yeah, and maybe we might even see a little spark on Toronto's side. We never know, but if – 
If the biggest Saints game of the season defensively, yeah, it is. Sauce is, is the biggest game of the season. Yep. Playing against our division rivals is going to be the biggest one, game two of the in the standings. This is the big, I mean, next to the Rochester and, game from or the last Rochester home game, this is mm-hmm. the biggest game of the season right now. Right here is definitely, and we still got, let's see, we got Toronto coming up Saturday. Then we, we got the, that we play the Riptide, Riptide for our next home and game, then Toronto is, again. Yep. And, and then, then we play Albany the final game of the season. And that's it. And that's it. And then we head into the playoffs, hopefully healthy, hopefully. ready to go, and just do your thing. That's Enjoy you the week do. off after the Toronto game, too. Like, rest get your bodies. Healthy, guys. Rest your bodies. Oh. Yes, go to the Buffalo Cryo Center and get some acupuncture. Do some stuff to, you know, heal yourself up a little bit. But uh, 7-6 overtime from the 6-1-9 in San Diego. Big win. Crucial win. A lot of the a lot of the teams in the Eastern Conference kind of helped us out there too. Maybe even mm-hmm. a team in the West that we might not even be looking at in the playoff standings. Thank you, Vancouver. Uh, knocking Colorado, they're still in fourth, but they're falling backwards right now. Out of the, I mean, that's the only reason why I'm paying attention to the West is because if they go to the playoffs, any team that goes to the playoffs has a legitimate shot at the championship. Absolutely. Any sport, any sport whatsoever. Just look at that, and. Colorado is that flashy team that sort of got hot at the right time last year in the playoffs and they were upsetting teams and beating teams. And look what they did. They won the championship. So keep them in the rear view mirror. Uh, Mm -hmm. We'll continue to scoreboard watch just because we have to, it's this crucial point in the season where we absolutely have to. And we got a big game coming up next week on the road. Yep. And I think our next home game is April 15th, which is Mm -hmm. absolutely unbelievable to think about as well. Yep. We got two weeks to go. Uh, after this game, we got a week off, and then we come home for the next following two. And then we're off to the last week of April in Albany. In the, in the state capital. We, yep. In the state capital. But for those of you guys, I uh, just wanted to say uh, if you guys watch us on YouTube, please make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, hit that notification bell to listen to your boys, uh, Trevor and myself, um, yes, to give ourselves that like rating. And then also, for those who listen in on Spotify.fm and Acre as well, give us that five star rating. We want to hear you guys out yeah, there. Yeah, we love that. I think, also, we're at, I think we're at 4.7 stars right now. Let's get that thing up to that, five. Let's yeah. get it up to five. We're almost there. So, the more listeners, the more followers, we really appreciate it. Um, and also, guys, for our sponsor, that is Mitchell's Tavern over at 734 Sheridan Drive. Drive, go and check it out. Um, you guys are not going to be disappointed with their best beef on Wick in town. Uh, they got great food, amazing service, and also don't forget to mention your boys here, Trevor Howard and myself, Tony LaMonica, aka Box at 98 CL, says they said you got great food. We want to see it proven. So go Absolutely. ahead and enjoy yourself there. Absolutely. And seven six overtime, probably the weirdest game of the season, probably the weirdest game over the last few years, probably since before mm-hmm. the COVID break. But uh, a win is a win, no matter how ugly it is. There was some good, some bad, some ugly, but we will come back with a vengeance next week as we travel to Hamilton to face Mm -hmm. the Toronto Rock. So I'm ready for that game, even though they play in Hamilton. It doesn't make much sense to be called Toronto anymore. Uh, But, Tony, I think we only got three more words to say for the people out there. Let's say it. Let's. Let's. Go. Go. Bandits. Bandits. Let's Let's freaking freaking go. go.